why the link between African and European DNA is so unique. For years, scientists have been studying how people migrated around the world and where they came from. They've been trying to piece together the story of human history. But one part of it has remained a mystery, the connection between Africans and Europeans. But recently, scientists made a surprising discovery that challenges everything they thought they knew. It turns out that Europeans have African DNA that nobody knew about. This hidden connection between Africa and Europe has been overlooked for a long time, but it's about to change our understanding of the past. How did this African DNA end up in European populations? Before we dive right in, comment below. Which African country do you think has the most DNA in Europeans? The Discovery of the Hidden Genetic Link Between Africans and Europeans it all began after the completion of the Human Genome Project, a massive undertaking that mapped the entire human genome. Researchers became interested in European DNA, but as they analyzed it, they started to notice something strange. Many Europeans, particularly those from the Mediterranean region, carried genetic markers that were commonly found in African populations. At first, they thought it might be contamination or errors in the data. But as research continued, scientists discovered that many Europeans carried a type of DNA called mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mother to child. This DNA is particularly useful for tracing ancestry because it doesn't mix with other DNA, so it remains relatively unchanged over generations. And what they found was that many Europeans had mitochondrial DNA that was closely related to African populations. What does this mean, you might ask? Well, if many Europeans carried African DNA, it meant that there must have been significant migration and interbreeding between these two continents at some point in history. But when and how did this happen? Scientists discovered that the genetic link between Africa and Europe was not just recent. It actually went back thousands of years, to a time when the continents were still connected by land bridges and sea routes. They found evidence of ancient trade networks, a cultural exchange, and even migration patterns that had brought people from Africa to Europe. At the time, the Mediterranean Sea was not a barrier, but a bridge that connected the two continents. It was a time when merchants, traders, and travelers moved freely between Africa and Europe, exchanging goods, ideas, and cultures. Ancient civilizations of Egypt, Greece, and Rome were also rising to power, and far from being isolated the Sahara and Mediterranean regions served as important zones of interaction, facilitating cultural and genetic exchange. Scientists found ancient artifacts, such as pottery, jewelry, and tools, that showed a remarkable similarity between African and European cultures. They discovered that the ancient Egyptians, for example, had traded with the Mycenaeans of Greece, exchanging goods like grains, metals, and textiles. That's not all. They also found evidence of African crops, like sorghum and cowpeas, being grown in Europe and European crops, like wheat and barley, being grown in Africa. But it wasn't just goods that were being exchanged. People were moving too. People from Africa had indeed traveled to Europe, bringing with them their cultures, languages, and traditions. Within a few years, they had settled in this new land, but the story didn't end there. Ancient African Migration and Interbreeding with Europeans As these African migrants interacted with European populations, they interbred and formed new communities. This influenced the genetic makeup of Europeans. But how has science proven this? Researchers from the University of Leicester, led by Dr. Mark Jobling, analyzed the DNA of over 400 men who identified themselves as British. The researchers noticed a rare and unusual Y chromosome, known as HGA1, in a group of men from Yorkshire. This was very shocking, as this particular chromosome is extremely rare, and has only been found in a handful of people around the world, mostly in West Africa. The men who carried this chromosome were not only surprised to learn about their African ancestry, but also confused by how it ended up in their family tree they had always thought of themselves as typically European, with no known African connections. So how did this African Y chromosome end up in the Yorkshire men's family line? The answer lay in the past, in the history of human migration and interaction. 
So researchers recruited 18 men who shared the same rare surname, which had been recorded in Yorkshire, northern England, for centuries. The surname itself was a clue, dating back to the first use of surnames hundreds of years ago. By studying these men, the researchers hoped to pinpoint when the HGA1 variant had entered their lineage. The team ended up finding out that six of the 18 men with the Yorkshire surname carried the HGA1Y chromosome, including one man in the U.S. whose ancestors had migrated from England in 1894. Genealogical records linked these men to two family trees, both dating back to the 1780s in Yorkshire. The researchers were getting closer to solving the mystery, and their findings suggested that these two family trees were connected by a common male ancestor of West African descent living in England at least 250 years ago. The British men carrying the HGA1Y chromosome had a genetic marker that closely matched the one found in men living in West Africa today. This was an important clue, suggesting that their African ancestor had arrived in Britain within the past few thousand years. If the HGA1Y chromosome had been introduced to Britain thousands of years earlier, when humans first migrated from Africa to Europe, its sequence would have shown more divergence from the one currently found in West Africa. As the researchers pieced the puzzle together, there were several possible scenarios. First off, the HGA1Y chromosome could have entered the gene pool in northern England 1,800 years ago, when Africans fought as Roman soldiers. Secondly, it might have been introduced in the 9th century, when Vikings brought captured North Africans to Britain. But the majority of black men with the HGA1 variant currently live in the Guinea-Bissau and nearby countries in West Africa. This led the researchers to believe that the white man at the HGA1 variant likely had a black ancestor who arrived in Britain as a slave, beginning in the mid-16th century. Further research to back the claim that Europeans have African ancestry. To confirm this conclusion, another international team of researchers focused on specific lineage of sub-Saharan African origin, known as Haplogroup L, and performed the largest analysis of complete mtDNA genomes in Europe to date. The team discovered that the majority of European Haplo-L lineages, approximately 65%, arrived in more recent times, but the remaining 35% told a different story one that dated back to prehistoric times. The researchers proposed that these early contacts may have connected sub-Saharan Africa to Europe, not only via North Africa, but also directly by coastal routes. The mystery deepened as scientists wondered the reasons behind this genetic flow between Africa and Europe in prehistoric times. Dr. Antonio Salas, a leading researcher on the project, offered a possible scenario suggesting that some bidirectional flow might have been promoted when the last glaciation pushed some Europeans southward until the glacier receded and populations returned north. Priya Muriani and nine other researchers of the National Library of Medicine have also had research of their own to support the claim that Europeans and Africans have an ancestry link. They analyzed the genetic data of approximately 40 West Eurasian groups, and found that almost all Southern Europeans have inherited a small amount of African ancestry, ranging from 1% to 3%. This may not seem like a significant amount, but the researchers were able to pinpoint the time frame in which this African ancestry was introduced into the European population. According to their estimates, the average mixture date was around 55 generations ago. This is interestingly consistent with the historical record of North African gene flow into Europe at the end of the Roman Empire and subsequent Arab migrations. According to the researchers, the movement of people from North Africa into Europe was the African ancestry that influenced the genetic makeup of the European population. Thanks to the Human Genome Project, researchers from the University of Leicester, Dr. Antonio Salas' team, and researchers from the National Library of Medicine, the study of ancient DNA has revealed that the genetic history of Europeans is more complicated than we previously thought. The discovery of African DNA in European genomes 
has challenged our assumptions about the origins of modern Europeans. Even with how much information we have now, all of this is just the beginning. Scientists will continue to study the genetic history of Europeans. We can expect to learn more about the centuries-long interactions between African and European populations. We may also better understand how these interactions have influenced the ancestry of modern Europeans and, by extension, our modern-day world. To stay updated on this, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos on history, genetics, and your ancestry.